We are Meg and Cal. A year ago, we left our home in England and began our European adventure, travelling in our self-converted camper van, Flora. Covering over 12,000 miles, visiting 10 countries and sleeping in some of the most beautiful places in Europe. And some not so beautiful places too. So they say that you spend one third of your life in bed. But they've never heard about Flora and the Novice Explorer's sleeping pattern. We may be an exception to the rule. We love our sleep. Which brings us on to the topic of today's video, our DIY pull-out bench bed. After 365 nights of sleeping on it, can we honestly say that we've done a good job? Is it still comfortable? And has it stood the test of time? So in this video, we're going to review our creation. Our original video was made over three years ago. It's safe to say it lacks details and isn't the most informative build video. It was in the very early days of our self-build conversion and YouTube journey. We knew as much about making videos as we did about making camper van beds. We had very little experience and never wanted to call our videos how-to guides. We were very much the blind leading the blind. Even after thoroughly researching how to go about this task, we still ended up guessing. However, that video is currently the most popular on our channel and we get a lot of questions about it. Embarrassingly, it's just about to surpass 100,000 views. So we thought it was about time we make this video and answer some of the most commonly asked questions and give you guys some more information if you're wanting to build a bed similar to ours. For those of you wanting a straight and direct answer, we think our bed is a true success. We are truly content with our design and layout of the van and we're now confident to sing our design's praises. Building the bed has been one of our greatest achievements so far. But stick around to see how we actually constructed the bed and any design elements that we might change if we were to do it again. Flora's layout is a little bit different than the average T5. We wanted to make the most of the limited space and allow some sort of flow through the van. We also wanted to gain access to the living accommodation area through the back doors and the side loading doors. Our pull-out bench bed design allows us to have a comfy seat in the day, which we can eat and work off of, and then it pulls out magically into a double bed. It's literally just a few inches short of a regular sized double bed. There's also plenty of vital storage underneath. After plenty of research on forums, Pinterest and YouTube, we came up with a design that was simple, sturdy and achievable. We had to take into consideration the height of the wheel arch and built it around that. We did have grand plans of making a lift up top, but we soon realised that was far too complicated and would have added extra weight. Looking back now, I don't think it would have made our lives much easier. We had enough problems with just putting cupboard door hinges on. The bed is made from 4 by 6 cm wood. Now, we must admit we aren't exactly sure what type of wood we used. We let the experts at Juicens help us with the choice. You could get away with making it out of slightly thinner wood to reduce the weight. When in bench mode, excluding the foam mattress, it measures 180 cm in length, 38 cm in height and 76 cm in width. And when you pull the bed out, the total width is 124 centimetres. I think my sketch demonstrates these measurements more clearly. We use screws, wood glue and angled brackets to secure the bed frame and make it more strong and sturdy. So we used king size IKEA slats. You can buy these separately from the bed bases. Now you probably could get away with buying slightly smaller slats, but because we weren't 100% sure how the system was gonna work, we thought if we buy bigger, we can always cut them down later on, which is what we did and it actually worked pretty well. So there are multiple reasons why we chose to go with proper bowed slats. First and foremost, the bed has to be comfortable. Slats like these, especially with the bow and a bit of flex, they're going to give you much better lumbar support, so that'll make for a much more comfortable night's sleep. Secondly, having slats instead of one big plank of wood allows for better airflow, so you're going to avoid getting moisture and mould building up on, on the underside of the mattress. And obviously, because of the motion of the bed, we needed interlocking slats instead of one big plank of wood. This allows the bed to move in and out. It makes for a very sturdy bench and a very comfortable bed. 
So now I'll just quickly demonstrate how we attached our slats to our bed frame. Very simple, all you really need is a couple of screws. So if I just pull the bed out, the sliding portion, I think I can demonstrate a bit easier what I'm talking about. So the slats that form the bench, we have screwed in both sides. Now this makes it very sturdy, very rigid, very strong, and it keeps its shape really well. And as for the ones that attach the pull-out section of the bed, we've just screwed in the one side. Obviously we need the movement and um, it works quite well. So once they're pulled out, they just rest on the support beam here and have plenty of flex for a nice, comfortable night's sleep. Now, one commenter did say that we could have got away with only screwing in the bench sides at one point also, and this will allow for even more bowing action, but we haven't really had a problem with the bed. We finished the bed off with some pallet wood cupboard doors and our signature rope handles. Word of warning when using pallet wood, some are treated with nasty and harsh chemicals, so do a little bit of research before you dive in. Inside, the cupboards are kept up and in position with roller catches or gripper catches. These are really heavily used, so I feel that in the future we're going to need to replace them. We've added a strip of felt right onto the bottom of the bed frame that pulls out to help it glide along the vinyl floor. It works really well. We've stapled small squares of Velcro onto the part of the bed that pulls out. That also corresponds to the bottom of the mattress so that when we pull it out, it stays in position and just it's one lovely smooth movement. Works really well. We used to have some Velcro on the back wall there to keep the backrest up, but that had to go because it played havoc with my dreadlocks. The bed is anchored to the floor of the van using a fair few heavy duty angle brackets and spreader plates with multiple screws. We decided not to fix it to the sides of the van as the ply walls are awkward to work with and in our opinion it's not entirely necessary. The bed isn't going anywhere. However you can't really see any evidence of the brackets because we've added a ply floor and also a wall at the back to kind of box everything in. This makes it a lot easier for sliding out our storage boxes as there's no awkward lip of the bed to lift it up and over. We've lost a couple of inches, but it makes things a lot easier. We've also been able to box in our two leisure batteries really safe down at the one side of the bed and it just helps keep everything neat and tidy. And for that extra little je ne sais quoi, we added rubber matting so things don't slide about underneath whilst we're driving. And we've also added two sets of motion sensored LED lights. These are USB rechargeable and they come on once they sense the motion of the cupboard coming open, bing, they're on and they light it up from the back. The mattress is made from three inch foam with a one inch memory foam topper. We purchased this from Ace Foam in Shropshire. We simply emailed over the sizes we required and they were cut and sent to us in no time. So one of the favorite features of our van is the matching upholstery on the bed and the front seats too. We think it really ties in the whole design and just finishes it beautifully. Um, the design was by us, wasn't it? Yeah. Primarily. Choosing the fabric and the colors. Yep. At first we wanted something way more zany and I'm glad we didn't go with that in the end, didn't we? Because it would have been too much for the eyeballs to handle. And this is one job that we definitely didn't do ourselves. I don't have the skill to make it like this. Um, it would have been a little floppy, saggy mess of a pillow. So we roped in some help and that came in the form of Joma Upholstery, who just so happens to be your sister. Yeah, so thank you. Um, we will link her social media and website down below. That's J-O-M-A Upholstery. Um, she's done a cracking job and we get a lot of comments about the upholstery, don't we? Yeah, most of the time, you will notice that we keep our fitted sheet on the bed. That is partly due to laziness, but also a way of protecting from spillages and dirtiness. If you've got little people or dogs, it might be worth considering maybe a darker fabric or something that's more wipeable or washable. That's true. Although that being said, this has been in the van for quite a long time now. We have looked after it. There's been the odd spillage, yeah. but we've always acted quickly and the bed sheet takes the brunt of it anyway. But um, we think it just ties the van together lovely and just makes it so unique. Yeah, yeah, it's just floor, isn't it? Yeah. This end of the bed is also clad in pallet wood in a very similar fashion to the cupboards on the front of the bed. Here we have our light switches, USB ports, 12 volt outlets, and we later also added the control unit for our 12 volt planar diesel heater. 
The placement is certainly not ideal for everyone, but for us it works and we really like it. This is because everything is hidden. Some of the switches and 12 volt outlets aren't the prettiest things in the world, so it's quite nice to have them sort of out the way there. And it also means that we're not going to easily knock them, especially the heater. We're not going to accidentally make it go boiling or stop it when it's running. And it just keeps everything quite neat and tidy. And after living in the van for a year, we can now successfully plug a USB port in in the dark without even thinking about it. Honestly, if we were ever to make another camper conversion again, we would definitely use this same bed design. Definitely. I think it really maximises the space we've got, especially in such a, well, a relatively small van. Yeah. And for totally novice carpenters, I think we've done a pretty good job. Yeah. And also, compared to the price of a rock and roll bed, I know it's not as snazzy, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. I think it's also got more storage in it too. Oh, maybe. So, talking top tips, what would we recommend? Top tips? Good set of screws, don't buy cheap, and maybe an impact driver as well that's going to make the job a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, very much so. Also consider countersinking the screws into the frame and the slats. This will reduce the risk of them poking out the top and snagging the mattress or any sheets that go on top of it. That's right, I think we definitely sunk a few a little bit more in than they were initially. Yeah, pilot holes, that's a big one and something that we were really pretty stupid. But. That's just a general build thing, isn't it? You've got to make mistakes to learn. Yeah, don't dwell on it too much. <laughs> Our mattress took a little bit of getting used to, maybe a couple of weeks when we first got on the road because we'd never tested it before, but now we're more than comfortable and highly recommend it. Oh, definitely, yeah. So that brings us to the end of the bed review, I guess. If you're interested, we have a complete YouTube playlist of the whole build. We did 99% of the work ourselves, didn't we? So there's videos and there's also blogs as well written by Meg that accompany that with more information, relative uh, links and all that good stuff. Most of that you'll find in the description box below and I've made a dedicated and slightly more in-depth blog about how we made the bed and it's got all the relevant links, what products and sites that we use to source all of our materials and things like that. So head over there and you also get my beautiful sketch as well, which <laughs> I'm quite proud of. There's also all of our social media links down below. Don't be afraid to contact us if you want more information or to know anything else about our travels, what's next, all that good stuff. There's also Joan Repulstry down below, like we said. Yeah, and if you've watched to the end of this video, please consider subscribing and make sure you give us a like. Any questions, stick them in the comment box below and we'll get back to you. Yep, it really, really does help. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Over and out. See you in the next one. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, was that your rip? Yeah. <laughs> I've been in better shape. Apply floor and walls. So. <laughs> the bed base. <clears throat> we finished off the bed with some. We finished off the base with some. Pa uh, part of the bed that pulls out, which then brings the whole mattress across, across in a very smooth motion. <sighs> which brings us on to the topic of today's video. That was, that was ready. <laughs> three, two, one. After 365 nights of sleeping on it, have we done a good job? I don't like that, sorry. Three, <clears throat> two, one. Which brings us on to the topic of today's video. I keep forgetting to say my bed. <laughs> Three, two, one. So there's a couple reasons why we actually chose to go with proper bowed slats. <laughs> I can't remember what they are though. <laughs> Above, but uh, looking, no. We did have, and we had enough prop, and we had. <laughs> if you wanted to build a bed similar to ours, and the ones <laughs> we did have grand plans of making a lift-up top bit design. So in this video, <laughs> I think you want to probably move and then say it. Yeah. So in this video, we're going to review our creation. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> they say the average person spends one third of their life in bed. One third. Three, two, one.